Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. The debates are done. The advance polls and the mail-in ballots, they've started. The drought and the weather records continue to pile up. Hope celebrates the 40th anniversary of Rambo First Blood with a movie showing and a major gala with some of the stars. And a local para-swimmer from Sardis is ranked as the best in BC. Josh will have more in sports. Our special guests this week include four candidates for the upcoming election. Dr. Karen Bondar, Jeff Shields, Darren Olinger, and Mike McClatchy. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. Our top story is sponsored by the committee to re-elect Jeff Shields as Chilliwack City Councilor. To quote a song line from Simon and Garfunkel, Mrs. Robinson, welcome to the Candidates' Debate. Over the past week, the Chilliwack Chamber of Commerce held their debate for mayor and council wannabes. Chill TV held three debates, two for school trustees. The other was a town hall format for the mayor and the council. Now comes the voting process. The mail-in ballots are now available, and the deadline for those, October 13th. The first advance polling, that was this past Wednesday. The final chance for advance polling is next Wednesday, October the 12th. The details for the process can be found on the City of Chilliwack website. On October the 15th, Chill TV will have extensive coverage of the 2022 vote that starts at 8 o'clock on that Saturday, immediately after the polls close. Dr. Karen Bondar is known as the biologist with a twist, and since she defeated Richard Procy in the Chilliwack School Board by-election about a year and a half ago, she has been in the midst of many pointed comments from other trustees. Dr. Bondar will join Chill TV for an interview later on in the show. Darren Olinger is a relative politically, well, political newcomer and is in the running for school trustee. He'll be joining us in a few moments for his interview with Chill TV. Jeff Shields vying for a second term as Chilliwack City Councillor. A money and numbers guy, he has an interesting take on how the city business is done. We spoke with him, you'll hear from him later. And Mike McClatchy, he's been in the business circles for decades in Chilliwack and making a run for Chilliwack City Council. He bills himself as a get-things-done kind of guy. As with the other three, we'll have a conversation with him in a few minutes as well. Chilliwack weather records continue to fall as September was the warmest and the driest month on record. That according to Roger Panett at Environment Canada. The first two days of October also set heat records, and this is why the while the dry conditions persist. So on top of all of this, BC Wildfire Service has not closed the book on this year's wildfire season. Back in late July, the road access gate to Gilbar was locked and reinforced to restrict motorized vehicles and their access to portions of provincial crown land that's leading to the gravel bar and the side channels. Public access to the bar via foot traffic and small boat remained unaffected. Well, this was to protect the environment and the fish habitat after some repeat warnings to ATV riders that was all ignored. And then October the 1st, FVN and Chill TV were sent anonymously some pictures of the gate that had been cut open. Cinder blocks were actually moved aside. Chill TV has also learned the city of Chilliwack was advised that this happened and they have now take, taken steps to repair the closed gate. He has touched so many in the Fraser Valley and around the world, and there will be a public celebration of life for Ethan Fleming in November. The young man's brave fight with cancer uh, showed his desire to live. He wanted to get back to school and then hopefully find a cure for cancer. Ethan lost his battle with cancer last month. He went through a number of surgeries and procedures. He was only 16. His mom, Tana, is inviting you to a public celebration of life November the 20th at Evergreen Hall. Purple Light Nights are the inspiration of the Covington Domestic Violence Task Force just south of us at King County in Washington State. The goal, to have all residents shine a purple light on every front porch in every business window and to send the message that violence is not tolerated. There are a number of events throughout the month of October in the Fraser Valley, so all you have to do is Google Purple Light Nights in either Chilliwack or Abbotsford and you will find an event that's near you. 
B.C. Health authorities and Providence Health Care continue to repatriate workers under Bill 47. That's going to bring an estimated 4,000 workers back onto the public system. On October the 1st, a further 90 housekeeper workers and 43 food service workers came back to Fraser Health at Chilliwack General Hospital and next door at the Bradley Center. Now this, as 133 housekeeping and food service workers return to the public system, they are now Fraser Health employees. The change comes almost 20 years after those workers having their services contracted out to private companies. Time flies when you're blowing things up, all because, quote, you wanted something to eat. You probably know the story of First Blood. You know the story of Sylvester Stallone and the making of the first Rambo movie 40 years ago in Hope. The Rambo 40th anniversary is this long weekend with a showing of First Blood as well as a Sunday noon ceremony involving the family of one of the stars, the late Brian Dennehy. He was the sheriff that you didn't like. Uh, there will be a number of MCs. You will be asked to do your best Rambo shout, and I quote, uh, Nothing is over. I had to do my best Rambo. That's the best I could do. After the break, another four interviews with election candidates, and then Josh will have sports. Chill TV's News of the Week continuing with our conversations with the candidates for the 2022 municipal election. Dr. Karen Bondar going after term number two as a trustee. Uh, term number one, you came in uh, halfway through and just curious to know, it was a short period of time. What did you learn? What was the big big learning point for you on that one? Yeah, great question. I would say there is a pretty steep learning curve when you are a new trustee. So I feel like the first year and a half has been a real introduction for me for how the various parts of the school system work together. I've learned a lot about functionality, how our meetings go in terms of the, you know, the ones where we do business, the ones where we've got action items where we need to, um, you know, sign something or vote on something. And then there's the, uh, the other kinds of things where we have to talk to something or learn about something. So yeah, all kinds of things. And I would say that familiarity with the team is also a really important aspect of that. You know, it takes a while for people to uh, get to know each other and our work styles and stuff. And uh, what I've seen, you know, so far is, is just a, some really great synergy um, between, you know, Willow, myself, Dave, Jared is not running a game, yeah. but we've got, you know, we almost are at that point now where I, I know I can say something and then I know that, you know, Dave will have my back, for example, mm. if he's, he's great with details. And so that, that really helps when I sort of go with my big ideas and then Dave can kind of fill in. So I, I love that we're working as a team. Uh, I think, you know, of course, year and a half is not a terribly long time. So um, I've got a lot more learning to do, that's for sure. Uh, what some people may or may not know, yes. It's Dr. Bondar. And are you still teaching? <laughs> oh, yeah, I am. Yes. Yeah. So this uh, semester, I'm doing a third year swamps and bogs class. And this I is love. at UFE? Uh, it is. But we're actually doing a, the bulk of our work in the Great Blue Heron Reserve. Um, so we've got, you know, our experiments all set up in there. We go on uh, Wednesdays, our field days, and actually, um, just to kind of tie it right in with the school district, we've got three schools coming to meet us out there in November, um, just to, you know, talk about wetlands, the kind of work that we're doing and stuff. I love, you know, me, I love talking about science and I love talking about, um, not just you know, science, here's how you learn it, but mm. here's how you experience it. And how does it look like for our university students to maybe share that experience with a third or fourth grader? So I'm really excited about that um, possibility. In, uh, and if it happens, it happens and you get the second term, bucket list. What would you mm -hmm. like to see? Uh, yeah. Do you have some pet projects or pet ideas that you'd like to go for? Yeah, I do. I mean, I I love the direction that our district is, you know, taking as far as being a front runner in indigenization. Our new uh, plans in that regard include every school having a three-month uh, check-in period for how their reconciliation and indigenization uh, curriculum, uh, materials, discussions, anything that they're doing. Um, I, our, our district uh, principal for Indigenous education, Brenda Point, is um, a fantastic educator and really has the entire district poised to do really well this year in terms of our, you know, our approach to indigenization. One of the, uh, I guess you could call it the boring thing, part of the job is having to deal with budgets. Oh. Uh, something that Jared Mumford had mentioned uh, this past Monday uh, as uh, he, is, uh, he was at uh, the town hall meeting and saying that it, you are dealing, for lack of a better term, with a multi-million dollar 
business, corporation, whatever you want to call it. It is a school board that has to have this, this type of money. Uh, was that something that you saw coming or was that a big surprise that, okay, we got to go through this line by line by line? Yeah, <laughs> it was a bit of a surprise. And I am grateful for, you know, the excellent district staff that, that are the accountants and that have that real know-how around how our, our budgets are laid out. But I will say that it's also been, you know, I was, I was surprised, I guess. I, I knew the budget had to be fairly substantial. It's generally around that 150 million mark. Um, and yes, not something that I'm super used to in my frame of, of reference. So yeah, that's been a really good opportunity for me to uh, you know, speak with the accountants at KPMG. I was on the audit committee mm -hmm. this year. And so that just gave me an opportunity to look at the budget from another point of view. Um, yeah, lots of things to pay for. But you know, in going through something, even line items in a budget, you really, at least for me, it really reiterates, okay, yeah, and that piece of the ecosystem fits in here. And this part of the mm -hmm. budget goes with EAs who need to be here on the ground doing this for students. And yeah, so for me, it's all about those connections. You have the final word. Why should someone vote for Dr. Karen Bondar? <laughs> well, I really, really care about public education. I am a mom of four. All four of my kids are in the public system. I love the public system. I'm a product of the public system myself. And uh, both my parents were teachers. So for about as long as I can remember, uh, public education has been a huge priority for me. So please consider uh, voting for me on the 15th. I would be really, really grateful to do this job again. Thank Dr. You. Bondar, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Don. And just a reminder that uh, Chill TV will have extensive election coverage starting at 7.30 on Saturday night, October the 15th. And then as of 8 o'clock, we'll be able to tell you the numbers as they roll in live on Chill TV. You're watching Chill TV's News of the Week. Chill TV's News of the Week, continuing our conversations with the candidates for the 2022 municipal elections, whether it's city council, it's the mayor, uh, or for school trustee. Jeff Shields trying to go for uh, a second go round as a, as a, I was going to say school trustee, as a city councillor. Um, the first tour of duty, what did you learn? What was the biggest thing? Because uh, one thing that I hear all the time is, it's not what you expected. You have to deal with, not the slow wheels, of, of politics and how city works, but just how city works. Tour of duty, that's a, yeah. <laughs> that's an interesting way of uh, describing it, but I wouldn't call it a tour of duty. I think it, it's been, first off, it's been a wonderful four yeah. years. Um, it's, it's such a steep learning curve. Um, there's so much, you, you, you think you know what goes on at City Hall until you actually get there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow. It, it it's it's actually mind blowing. It, it, I I would say it takes you a year to kind of really wrap your head around what what all the city does and and what what the staff does. Um, they were absolutely incredible too, as far as training and, and as far as teaching, learning. There were three of us us rookies, and uh, we were there to help each other. The 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 vets on council helped us obviously, but. Um, um, I would, yeah, it, 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 the, the slow wheels of, of City Hall, that's, that's, I wouldn't call it that. That's a, that's a hopping joint. <laughs> okay. Now, and the learning curve, uh, you're a numbers guy. So when the first time you took a look at budget numbers, were you surprised or was there any left turns that you went, I never knew that was part of the, the city budget or was it, did you see, did you expect, did you see what you expected, expected what you saw? A little bit. I mean, there's lots of details to it, but you know, when you do your, I mean, with the accounting background, I, I could read a financial statement. So when you go through their annual reports, you kind of get an idea of where the money goes and and uh, and who takes what. It's a little surprising on some of the some of the budgets. I mean, I mean, the average person probably doesn't know that you know public safety is 44 percent of the budget. Um, the uh, um, uh, water and, and sewer. That's run. That's its own separate fund that runs independently, and and there's literally, you know, it always it always looks like there's money or there's there's building going on at the at the uh, the waste treatment plant, mm -hmm. and and there is, and there's always money put aside. There's a there's there's lots of money because, you know, water and sewer. You gotta we don't want those going wrong. You gotta have them. <laughs> uh, and again, speaking of money, and this was brought up at uh, the town hall. Correct me on this with BC Transit and talking about the buses and that. Was the the budget actually frozen for BC Transit for Chilliwack, or is it just uh, 
I may have mis misinterpreted that. Yeah, it was province wide. Province wide. So yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate because we put a we put a whole bunch of time and effort through the transportation advisory committee to to come up with some some new services and new routes that that we thought were really gonna gonna uh, uh, um, bump up our our local transit system. And unfortunately, we weren't able to put them through. Council approved them, so we've got it in the budget from our standpoint. So we just have to wait for the province to come through, and 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 then hopefully that happens next year. And you know, the the, the people that take transit will will notice some real improvements in service. Uh, one thing that came up at the recent town hall meeting was quote diversity in council. Uh, Sue Knott is not running for re-election. Uh, Amber Price and Nicole Haidema Reed is trying to get on council. Um, Deborah Sutar. Deborah Sutar is, yeah. is, 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 is there too in the mix. Um, is there a concern that privately you don't want all male or is, is, has that been blown up in social media a little too much or where do you stand on that? Your comments, any? Well, I think it is important to have, have diversity and, 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 you know, I, I, I don't like to say that there's, there's, you know the the difference between a, a man's view and a woman's mm. view, but but let's face it, there there is. I mean, I I look at me in my professional life. I look at, you know, for instance, Rotary Rotary or or any of the boards I've been on. It it's you you have to have that mix of of male and female, and and I think it's I think it is important, definitely. One thing that uh, seemed to have all of the councillor candidates feeling a little off was the question about endorsing somebody else on live television. Uh, how did you feel about that? <laughs> it was, that was an interesting question. Be, and and um, I, I, I felt, first off, I felt very bad for Nicole because it was kind of her first question yeah. and, 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 you know, it was a tough one to answer. But, um, yeah, I... I I don't know that I could really endorse this one person because you've got you're, you're six people on there. You're a team. Mm. The mayor is one person, mm. but but council is six people. So so you pick six. You don't pick one. You have the last word, Jeff Shields. Thank you, Don. You're Thank welcome. you for having me. Um, Chilliwack, October fifteenth. That's your opportunity to pick your next uh, city council for the next four years. I think I've uh, proven that I can. Uh, I can perform four years of experience under my belt plus plus 30 odd years experience in, in the professional world and the volunteer world. So uh, I'm hoping that you'll be out there and uh, you'll vote me in for another term. Jeff thank Shields, you. thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Don. And a reminder on Chill TV, you will have complete coverage right on your television or, or on your mobile device to find out what is happening on October the 15th at 8 o'clock when the polls close and Chill TV will be counting the ballots and telling you how you voted. That's all right here on Chill TV. You're watching Chill TV's News of the Week. Chill TV's News of the Week continues with our conversations with the candidates, uh, either for mayor, for council, or for school board trustee, Mike McClatchy. You want uh, to get on to city council. First off, the 62nd, uh, and we called this the elevator pitch on Monday, this past Monday for the town hall, but who is Mike McClatchy? What do you do for a living? Why do you want to run for council? Oh, well, first of all, I want to run for council because I've been in the background of in Chilliwack for many years. Successful businesses, retail, plumbing, heating, retail. I said that already. Yep, right. um, and my service industry in the restaurant business. Always been in the background. And now I'm, I want to be in the forefront. I want to show people how hard I can work for them. I've been in the background supporting all of our good local community. Um, I guess I would call them organizations. Yeah like our Meals on Wheels, mm -hmm. our food hubs, our Salvation Armies, and just random people through, through the whole community. And this has been ongoing for many years. Now I've recently have a, you know, an extra eight, 10 hours a day. So I want to put forward my name, my hard work ethic, and be able to support all the people at Chilliwack instead of just a few in the community. Uh, in your platform, you, you say, and I'm paraphrasing here, our city is doing a good job. I believe we can do better. 
what can we, are there some specific uh, bucket list items that you have that you want to see whatever you can do to, to make it make improvements our, our city council that we have now has been you know doing a great job they had over two years of covid which put them behind a screen and they had to run a city well i think they did a heck of a job now i did the same on a smaller scale we continue to run our businesses but we found out during COVID that if we can all work a little bit harder and smarter, we can still get things done. And I believe that there's still a lot of work on infrastructure, on everyday living in Chilliwack for business communities and the regular person who just goes out and works nine to five, they still need services, recreation services all the way down the line. So I think some of those can definitely be better. Mentioning services, uh, and this was the, the banter between uh, uh, Ken Popoff and Ian Carmichael, um, and I want your take on this. Uh, Ken Popoff, and again, I'm paraphrasing, running the city like a business. Carmichael said, no, run it like a service. Your take. My take. Well, the city is a business. The city buys property, sells properties, develops, not properties, but develops land in order to be used for future um, infrastructure. So make no mistake, my opinion, the city is a business. I've had constituents ask me, why can't we buy a gas station? Mm. And then we could control the price of gas. I don't think the city needs to go that far, but we do need to be able to run as a business. It's the only way to be fiscally responsible is to run it like a business. Uh, one other point that came up is uh, we now have six councillors. Uh, we used to have eight. It was pulled back. Uh, the argument is we're doing okay with six. Your take on that? Should we expand to eight? So <laughs> really easy for me to say, yeah, let's have eight, but yeah. that time's passed. Um, otherwise, the race is still only for six. I did a little research on that after it's come up a couple times, and I didn't realize they actually voted on that over a year ago. Mm -hmm. So now we have six. No point complaining about it. Work with it and see if we can get the job done. Maybe down the road, when I'm elected as an official, um, we could look at eight. What I did take out of that, though, was having an Indigenous leader from our community on the City Council. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, and any other comments about that? Because diversity did become a hot point, uh, talking point at that town hall. Yeah. Uh, any other thoughts or? Well, as far as the eight versus six, I think if we at least have one more Indigenous member from one of our um, other communities, that we'd be doing good okay. for the community. Uh, one thing that always comes up with uh, those that want to be, get into City Council is, I want to see this, this, and this. But then there is the reality of how city government works, not just Chilliwack, but anywhere else. Uh, are you prepared to be patient? Uh, because you, you probably need a lot of it. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. I was told right away from some close friends that I'm in a business and I run my businesses on a get it done attitude. By the time it gets to me, they've already exhausted every resource that they have. Mm -hmm. So they come to me and I can make it happen. I do know that working with the city, I'm not going to be able to make it happen as fast, but I'll put the time and the effort in for sure to make things happen. You have the final word. And why on October the 15th should we vote for Mike McClatchy? Well, a little bit in my opening. I am willing and I have the time to put in the hard work. Smart work, hard work for all community members, not just any one particular group. I'd like to just go up the middle, make sure the sidewalks are good, make sure the diking systems are good, make sure that our fire department, you know, there's a lot of talk about that. Mm -hmm. We have a brilliant fire department and fire system in Chilliwack. My friends from back when I was in my 30s are finally getting out, but there is no better department in the, in the valley than Chilliwack. If our paid on calls weren't as good as they were and are and will be in the future, we wouldn't be having this discussion. But we have a great community and that speaks for it. Mike McClatchy, a big thank you for joining us. Thank you. You're watching Chill TV's News of the Week.
Shell TV's News of the Week continuing our series of talking with the candidates as we lead up to the 2022 municipal elections. And uh, this go-around, Darren Olinger, who is running for school trustee in Chilliwack. Darren, we start off with the same question we start off with everybody. Who are you? Where do you come from? What's your background? My name is Darren Olinger. Uh, I come from Chilliwack originally. Uh, I've spent some time abroad, and <laughs> much like the prodigal son came back uh, home yep. uh, where family and friends are. Uh, I have uh, one godson, so practically I'm responsible you are a dad, pretty much, yeah. for the education yeah. of my godson. And that is the segue that leads into why I'm running for school board is yeah. because I'd like to have some um, control over what today's youth are being subjected to both in the public school mm -hmm. library and um, in the curriculum. Okay. Uh, did you go to what, Chilliwack uh, Secondary or Sardis? Okay. Yeah, uh, parochial school, parochial. elementary, okay. St. Mary's, then Chilliwack Junior High, which yeah. has been replaced, and then Chilliwack okay. Senior High, which has been replaced. Okay. Then you, uh, uh, Fraser Valley College. Okay, we're going back a few years. Then yeah. the yeah. University of the Fraser Valley College, uh, uh, BCIT, and um, University of British Columbia. Okay. So uh, I'm a proponent of um, higher education okay. and... That, once again, is another reason why I'm running for the school board is, is uh, to have the fundamental um, cornerstone for advancement into uh, higher education, having the students be prepared for it. But um, the teachers in uh, the, L or the um, post-secondary system uh, have... Uh, have, have a great deal of influence mm -hmm. and um, as, a, as a board member trying to bridge the gap between the parents and the teachers, I think that uh, the teachers have a, a greater responsibility for the development of character of the, ch the youth or the child uh, and um, they should be graded or, or judged, maybe rated by mm -hmm. the students on the personal philosophy of how they approach the individual and what kind of guidance they give the student, uh, much like in the, the library, you know, it's um, there for academic research mm -hmm. and uncensored exploration. Mm -hmm. Now, the materials in the, the school library are uh, can be contentious. So I was just thinking. Uh, I know that's something that Will Reshelt has, has, yeah, yeah, has, has uh, been brought up, and it has a few had had a few questions the, against her. The, yeah. the uh, 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 offense of. Prob problematic offensive mm -hmm. works in the library. So I'm figuring maybe what, what would be practical is to have a library card with a code on it that the parents mm -hmm. control the code, what's acceptable for c consumption. Mm -hmm. But um, that, that's ha ha hardly practical. I think what the uh, library needs is a mission statement in line with um, Plato's uh, guardians, mm -hmm. so that uh, there is guidance and the student doesn't poison himself by reading mm -hmm. or assimilating material that could be considered to be pernicious. Uh, getting into higher education, do you want to see more emphasis on reading, writing, and arithmetic, or is in, in uh, arithmetic or um, uh, other subjects that uh, really haven't been brought up uh, so far in this debate? Well, I'm, I'm thinking... Um, Going back to when I started post-secondary, uh -huh. the reason that I went wasn't for getting credentials to have employment. It was to expand my horizons and become knowledgeable about mm -hmm. the world. But things have changed since then. I'm thinking, you know, I should have exploited or capitalized on the education when I had it fresh in my mind to mm -hmm. get to work. So, man, my advice is that if you're going to be taking post-second education, um, seek a guidance counselor so you know, don't waste your time and money uh, learning how to do, trying to learn how to do something that you don't like doing. Uh, we give everyone the last word, and why should the voter vote for Darren Ollinger? Oh, <laughs> uh, because I care, mm -hmm. you know, um, whether it's my godson or your child, uh, I, I don't want to see them fail in a, a social aspect, um, but rather to be successful in, in their career. Uh, further careers should they uh, pursue them, whether it's trade school, mm. uh, the sciences, liberal arts, or, or whatever. Find out what you're good at, get a guidance counselor to help you, and uh, fulfill your dreams.
Darren Olinger, thank you so much. And a reminder that Chill TV will have extensive coverage on election night, October the 15th, uh, with our early program at 7.30. And then at 8 o'clock, we will have the results of municipal election 2022 as Chilliwack votes. You're watching Chill TV's News of the Week. How's it going, everyone? Josh here with you once again. We're back. It's sports. That's, that's what we do here. So let's just jump into it. We're going to send out some huge congratulations to begin today, going out to Chilliwack Spartan swimmer Lucas Van Herk, who was awarded BC's top male para swimmer over the weekend by Swim BC. Lucas is a grade 9 student at Sardis Senior Secondary, and this prestigious award was given to him at the BC Swimming Congress over the weekend up in Whistler. Congrats to you, Lucas. Huge achievement. We're very proud of you. Now, let's go to football. Even though the Valley Huskers beat the West Shore Rebels 28 to 10, good news. Uh, the Rebels scored a critical late touchdown on literally the last place of the game, last play of the game, pardon me, that saw them maintain their tiebreaker with the Huskers based on their head-to-head -head scoring in their two meetings this season. So both teams now sit second and third in the conference with identical 6 and 3 records heading into the last week of the season. Whoever takes second place gets home field advantage in the playoffs for the semifinals. This weekend, the Huskers are going to host the Kamloops Broncos. Saturday afternoon, 2 p.m., Exhibition Stadium. Again, last game of the season, kind of winner take all. Well, okay, not quite, but winner takes second place. <laughs> Let's stick with the Huskers because five members of the team made the 2022 BCFC All-Star team. On offense, we have running back Reese Wyke on offense as well, offensive tackle Isaiah Latander, and wide receiver, wide receiver Dylan Menocha. On defense, defensive lineman James Moore and linebacker Jaden Clawson. That's a local boy. Congrats to those guys. Unbelievable achievement as well. Let's go to some high school football because, uh, well, the score was um, forgettable with the senior varsity Falcons football team losing to Belmont 32-8. Uh, to That did not dampen the spirit of the day. Sardis Secondary's football field was rededicated to the late alum Rick Clawson. He went on to have a pro career with the CFL's BC Lions, and sadly, cancer took him far before it was his time. Premier John Horgan paid a visit to the event before he went off to the BC Lions game in Vancouver, and as part of the Truth and Reconciliation events, Grand Chief Stephen Point addressed the crowd as Sardis Secondary as well, so all told, a good day overall. In a battle of the number one seed versus the number two seed, the top two teams in the province did not disappoint. The number two ranked Vancouver College Fighting Irish beat the GW Graham Grizzlies 28-23 tight game. Now, the 4-3 and three Irish won it at the end of the game, but don't call it an upset. These two teams were very evenly matched, and uh, the Grizzlies didn't really help their cause, getting 12 penalties over the course of the day, racking up 115 yards in penalties. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't, that's not going to help you. So next up for the Grizz, the Abbey Panthers on Friday night, October the 7th, in Abbotsford at 7 p.m. Now, I'm just going to say something that's relatively uncontroversial. Everyone loves dogs, especially like young married couples who aren't sure if they want to have kids, but want to you know, get some practice with that responsibility. Anyways, that's a, that's a tangent. The Chilliwack Fraser Valley Dog Fanciers Show is at Chilliwack's Heritage Park over this long weekend. The annual confirmation shows and obedience trials are always held over the Thanksgiving weekend. In addition to the four days of all-breed shows, there are a number of local, regional, and national specialty clubs that hold events in conjunction with them. This event draws a large number of exhibitors from across Canada and the U.S. So if you're interested, check it out this Thanksgiving weekend. By the way, have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I'm thankful to be here, thankful to do this every week, and I hope to see you all next week. All right, we'll go to Don with the weather. Chill TV weather, this is the Thanksgiving weekend, and you cannot ask for better weather. It's sunshine in the highs and the low 20s. So pass the mashed potatoes and the gravy, please. If you'd like to participate in reporting news in Chilliwack and you have a story you think we should know about, you can always send us a note at news at chilltv.ca. We'd love to hear from you. That's the news this week. Have a great Thanksgiving. I'm Don Lane. <laughs>